new year, a new model. A new Chinese company just released an open source code model that is making some pretty bold claims, saying that it can outperform Claude Sonnet 4.5 and even GPT 5.1, despite having far fewer parameters. Now, I don't fully agree with these claims and I'll explain why later, especially when it comes to benchmark maxing. But regardless, what they've built here is genuinely impressive. This is where I would like to introduce iQuest Coder, developed by Quest Research. This is China's quant hedge fund that is called UbiQuant. iQuest Coder is something that comes in four model sizes, 7 billion, 14 billion, as well as 40 billion. And there's also a 40 billion loop model. And they're designed specifically for software engineering and competitive programming. What really stands out is their efficient architecture, especially the loop variant, which introduces a recurrent mechanism that optimizes the trade-off between model capacity and deployment footprint. This is a huge deal if you care about real world usage and not just benchmarks. And on top of that, all models natively support up to 128K context length, which isn't a lot, but it relies on additional scaling tricks to get the best context. Now, looking into the benchmarks, this is a model that is pretty reputable based off of their benchmarks that they had reportedly provided. And it looks eye-catching because you can see that the iQuest coder over here has reportedly scored an 81.4 percentage on the Sway Bench Verified, which is definitely outpacing GPT 5.1, but also outcompeting Sonnet 4.5, which is just absurd to think. On other benchmarks like Big Code Bench as well as Live Code Bench, you can see that this model is outcompeting many proprietary models, which is just incredible while being a 40 billion parameter size model. But the thing is, it's too good to be true because I personally believe that these benchmarks are inflated. The iQuest team have showcased many red flags with this because they firstly didn't even disclose how their evaluations are in. And on top of that, these benchmarks are definitely something that have been maximized to attract eyes, but without any sort of actual backing to those different benchmarks. On top of that, it turns out the iQuest coder's Sway Bench setup was actually flawed because the valuation environment included the entire Git history. This included future commits and the model appears to actually exploit this leakage. And because of that, many, including me, I reportedly think that this Sway Bench score is not effectively valid and it should be discarded because it's definitely raising some questions about whether the numbers reflect real world capabilities with software engineering tasks. Or in this case, it just may look like that it's simply optimized for popular benchmarks without any sort of meaning. But regardless of all of that, they did introduce something genuinely new, which is a loop based architecture that uses a recurrent mechanism to reuse parameters across reasoning steps. So effectively, it is going to increase the model's capacity without increasing the model size. So you can have a 40 billion parameter model that is capable of performing at a level that it shouldn't be. And this essentially allows the model to balance performance and deployment efficiency in a way that we don't see often in open source code models. And it's arguably the most interesting part of this release, even if the benchmarks claim themselves that they actually are at such a level when they're actually not. Beyond just benchmarks, the iQuest coder is also introducing a code flow training, and this is essentially to track evolution over time. They have introduced a dual thinking versus instruct post training path, as well as long context reasoning with agent trajectories. So overall, it is something that works with the loop architecture and that drastically is able to cut the usage of overhead and it boosts throughput and it enables single GPU deployment, which is great. And that's why you're gonna be able to host these models locally that deliver massive efficiency gains at minimal added training costs. There is a developer on Twitter who tested out this model in different benchmarks, and I'll leave his profile in the description below. And essentially this is where he had requested it to create a browser-based OS. And in this case, this 40 billion parameter model was able to successfully generate that web OS. It's nothing extraordinary. It is a basic web OS that has basic components like the calculator, the terminal, as well as web browsing features. But it's not something that is extraordinary. And in my opinion, this generation definitely lacks the quality. But surprisingly, when I had ran the loop model locally with Olama, this is where I had it test on generating a 3D scene setup. And it was able to code it out quite rapidly. And it did a decent job with this generation. 
I'm actually able to move around the scene, includes geometry, lighting, and interactive controls. And you can actually visualize how it looks during the nighttime. So this is where you can see that the lamps have been highlighted. Now, I believe Gemini did a way better job with this, but you can still see that it did a decent job with this loop model. It also was able to showcase that it does better job with spatial reasoning with this command. It also showcases the multi-component integration by adding these different pieces of furniture. So in this case, this generation is definitely great to see for this model that is only 40 billion parameters. Before we get started, I just want to mention that you should definitely go ahead and subscribe to the World of AI newsletter. I'm constantly posting different newsletters on a weekly basis. So this is where you can easily get up to date knowledge about what is happening in the AI space. So definitely go ahead and subscribe as this is completely for free. In this next test, they had it generate a particle text coverage and burst generation. So this is where you're going to be able to see the text sample and if it was to have an interaction with the browser or sorry, a cursor, you can see that it is going to mold based off of my cursor position. And you can see that it looks visually appealing. It also is able to uh, include how the physics would work when you're moving through the words. And this is something that is really hard for any model to actually complete. So it's great to see that this model was able to actually accomplish this. This is a really cool one. This is a prompt that tests the model's ability to simulate real-time physics and elements in terms of an interaction within this sandbox. And it was able to fully code this out. So you can see me placing down sand and it is able to give you a good visualization of how it would actually handle the dynamic updates of different sorts of elements when it actually interacts with it, which is just really nice to see. You can see that if I am to place down stones, it doesn't actually fall down. But if I am to place down acid, it would break through the stones and all of these different elements. So this is something that is evaluating how it can actually handle these dynamic updates, what my user input is with the interaction and the performance optimization for an interactive simulation. So in this case, it did a great job with this generation. This is a 3D solar system that it generated. And in my opinion, you can see the quality of detail with this generation. You can see the solar flares emitting out of the sun, which is really incredible. You can see that it accurately showcases the speed of all of the different planets. And it did overall a great job with this orbit. You can change the speed with these different features. You're able to see a side view, a top view, an angle view, a free camera where you can roam around. And you can even follow individual planets, which is really cool. So if I want to click on another planet, like I would say Saturn, you can follow that planet. Uh, I think it switched it from Venus from Saturn. But you're also able to see the orbital path of each individual planet, which is really nice to see. So the quality over here with the simulation is definitely great to see. This is another impressive demo where it was able to create this single file HTML5 canvas space shooter. So in this case, you're able to see that you have a functional game that it generated and it has different feature sets that you wouldn't typically see any model or basic model generate. So this overall just shows that you have a small your model that is capable of generating qualitative stuff and the fact that you're able to keep a model like this locally is just insane despite the false benchmarks that they had reportedly showcased next is where i had requested it to create a discord clone and this is a pretty decent generation i would say the front end capabilities of this model are pretty decent and you can see that you're able to move through different channels and it is something that has interactive components. If you like this video and would love to support the channel, you can consider donating to my channel through the super thanks option below. Or you can consider joining our private discord where you can access multiple subscriptions to different AI tools for free on a monthly basis, plus daily AI news and exclusive content, plus a lot more. Now, unfortunately, despite the benchmarks that they had showcased, this is still an underwhelming model. Now, I'm not saying that it is horrible. I believe that this model is on par with something like Quen3 in certain cases. And overall, it is definitely something that does provide a new architecture that has its own pros. But overall, this model's efficiency and practical usability is not on par with many of the other open source models, despite the benchmarks that they had showcased. Currently, 
they don't even have an API in which you can access or any sort of public evals to test this out with third-party verification systems. But if you're looking to install this locally, I'll leave a link to this Hugging Face model card in the description below so that you can install these models with something like LM Studio or with Open Web UI. But that's basically it, guys. I hope you enjoyed today's video and got some sort of value. I'll make sure to leave all these links in the description below. But make sure you go ahead and subscribe to the second channel if you haven't already. Join the newsletter, join the Discord, follow me on Twitter. And lastly, make sure you guys subscribe, turn on the notification bell, like this video, and please take a look at our previous videos because there is a lot of content that you will truly benefit from. But with that thought, guys, have an amazing day. Spread positivity, and I'll see you guys fairly shortly. Peace out, fellas.